Um, Kay Bullivant, first of all, is this a pattern that you've seen before, that uh, a young man feels that he is being pursued assiduously by MI5, for example, or other uh, forces, like police or whatever, and is sufficiently ra radicalised to go on jihad? Unfortunately, and it is very, very sad, but we've seen this happen many, many times. The most prominent and, and, uh, case was probably Adebolajo. But you yourself were under control order mm. for two years. You eventually, despite the fact that MI5 said that they had e evidence to keep you under control order, it was overturned by the High Court. Mm -hmm. You didn't then go and behead people. But after a year and a half of being on the control order, I'd had so much... Um, of, of the of the stress and I, I absconded. I went on the run. I was I was there. But it I, made, I, I did was you feel gone. resentful of the authorities? Uh, completely. I grew up in Britain. I'm British uh, and as British as anyone else. You grow up with this idea that we're heroes, that we're um, looking after the world, and then all of a sudden I'm put on an order that resembles Burma and a, and a military government house arrest on secret evidence. Is it plausible Cage's position? that, yes, he was a gentle young man. He goes on safari to Tanzania, stop from going on safari. There's various other interludes with MI5, and then he becomes an executioner. Well, I, I found this a very, very difficult thing to, to swallow all day long. Uh, and I think the general public has as well, listening to the arguments that have come from Cage with regards to the radicalization of Jihadi John. I think there's a multiple uh, series of issues here we have to unpack. This is someone who, according to Cage, was radicalized because he was unjustly being accused of being a jihadi. So he responds by becoming a jihadi. I mean, that, that doesn't make sense. He went to Tanzania, didn't get in, and returned. And we're, be, we're led to believe that that's the turning point at which he decides to go and become a jihadist. In uh, 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 did alarm bells ring with you the idea that three young men were going to Tanzania to go on safari, or did you think that in itself was plausible? Well, there's clearly a reason why the security service felt that they needed to be spoken to. This is not, you know, the picture that's been painted today is that these are three men standing at a bus stop in Clapham who've suddenly randomly been picked up whimsically uh, and unjustly uh, brutalised or something. This is not the case. Um, there's obviously, we don't know what the quality of that intelligence was. We don't know what they were about to do uh, in Tanzania. We only have um, conflicting accounts of, of what may or may not have happened. But clearly, um, you know, this is, this is a narrative that Cage has put today in order to, to, to control the agenda surrounding uh, this man's identity. How are we looking to control the agenda? Firstly, the Schedule Sevens and the stops and the powers that are used are very often m massively overused. Um, in, in some of the worst years, Schedule Seven has 90,000 stops. We've seen many, many cases like mine where the security services were sure that they had a dangerous person. And then it, but, it, but it, Kerry, it, surely it takes somebody quite extraordinary that it goes from, in Cage's uh, own words, from being a mild-mannered computer programmer, a gentle person, to suddenly becoming a jihadist, and not only becoming, mm. becoming, as it were, the masked face of IS. Yeah. Surely that cannot be justified by some altercation with MI5. Well, no one's justifying what he did. This isn't about the what, it's about the why. And how do we end up from a position of A to a position of Z? And it's that journey that we need to properly analyse. And I would say that in the whole counter-terrorism debate that we've been having over the last 10 years, this conveyor belt theory that has been the, uh, the overarching uh, narrative hasn't been proven to be uh, solid. Sure. I think the philosophical point that Sari makes is completely valid. As a society, we do occasionally look at and discuss the issues of counter-terrorism legislation, how much... Um, uh, uh, powers should the security service have? What's GCHQ doing? Th these are debates we're all familiar with. Viewers of the programme will be familiar with. But what's so remarkable is that Cage has chosen to use the unravelling of Jihadi John's identity to make him the poster boy for this debate. I mean, it's, is that it's not, it's not, it's not on goal for you? It, it's not making him the poster boy. It's looking at the actions that have led from the position that he but was that, in you're making to a causal, here. You are definitely making a causal connection. And there, she, and there, there is a causal connection. But, How many times have we seen this happen again and again? With Adabalajo, the security services were threatening to have his brother tortured, and he, that puts him in the mindset of a soldier. Then he carries out an attack on a soldier, but, uh, but and, in, we, and, it, and in court declares himself to be a combatant. But as, as I said to you earlier, it didn't happen to you. Could it have happened to you? I'll be honest, I had, I had already 
breached, I'd left the system, as it were. I was in hiding, and there was a moment there. The two people that I was in hiding with, one of them ended up killed in a drone strike. There, but for the grace of God. But would you and have it, gone, could you have gone to Syria? Were you ready to pack your I, bag? I, it was 2006, the, the situation yep. was entirely different. The, the fact of the matter is that, based on, on my circumstances, I made a decision to come back, but... You've got to remember that the, the pressure and the stress that you're put under, you're given yeah. no avenue. It's not just, sorry, just quickly, yeah. it's not just that justice has to be done, it has yeah. to be seen to be done. And if people can't see any way of getting justice, then they're going to look for alternatives, it, which can be horrific. What would be the impact, do you think, of us aware, not the unmasking, obviously, but the naming of this man? What do you think the impact will be on would be jihadis, but also on the efforts to get him? I don't think anything really changes uh, in that sense. The security services, both sides of the Atlantic, mm. have known exactly who he is. The United States announced months ago that they knew precisely who uh, Jihadi John was. He, he gives a, a, a tremendous kind of face, you know, this idea that this is a British jihadist and that he is in very much... It's exactly what IS wants to do, isn't it, to bring this straight back into the heart of Britain? Well, it, it's clearly a, a, a move that they've been pushing to attract other people to come and join them. And because from their perspective, he, he, he's a, a perfect face for, for these sorts of activities. But how do you counter that? Because presumably you want at every turn to counter that. Of, look, of course. The fact of the matter is, the reason that we're bringing up this narrative is because after 12 years of, of counter-terrorism since 9-11, what we've got is a world that isn't any more safe. The rise of groups like Islamic State are, are, are much more widespread. The threat is, is it, questionably want, even higher than it was. I want to say something. Today, Cage has put this out constantly. And that's, it's a view that, that they're entitled to. I don't think anyone else is buying it, but it's a view that they're entitled to hold. It's an argument they're entitled to make. At what point have we heard anyone from Cage, Asim Qureshi, in this very long press conference today, almost eulogizing this man, praising this man, but at no point do we hear anyone say he needs to take responsibility for his actions. That's he nonsense. Needs to... we, we, Will you say it now? We, we have said, and we said there... He chose that, to do this. Yeah, of course. We, we take no agency away from his actions. And we said, and Asim said in that press conference, I was sitting next to him, that he needs to be held to account for his actions in the same way... For the deaths as, of at least seven people. Of course. In the same way that everybody who tortures, that everybody who kills unjustly across the world from both sides must be held to account. We can't just be seen to be uh, having standards for one set, but yet Guantanamo torturers, it's no problem. Thank you both very much indeed. Thank you.